One is up, YouTube bitch boy, Millsy, back with Hometown Commander, back for another episode of Millsy Brews, the show where I brew my version 1.0 decklist of the Commander in front of us on my quest to brew the magic world. As always, the decklist is going to be down in the description for you below. As always, I would appreciate anything you can do to interact with the video, like, comment, subscribe, check out all the links in the description, I would appreciate it. But today, I thought we'd celebrate all of the energy support in Modern Horizon 3 by looking at what we kind of first saw for energy, right? When our first time around in Kaladesh, it was the team or energy colors that were very popular, that had a lot of support. Was so much of the new energy support being in Jeskai, and we were already looking at that on the channel, I thought it'd be different to go ahead and go into Teamer and see what does Teamer energy have for us that's a little bit different, and pick a classic commander that people use for it in Riku of Two Reflections. Um, if you're interested, a lot of what the deck's trying to do is the same thing that we did for Satya, which is creatures ET being and making energy and trying to gain as much as we can from that. The difference is, instead of Satya needing to attack and us needing to pay energy to keep those creatures around, Riku says that whenever we cast an instant source here, we can play blue-red, and if we do, we just get to copy it. Or whenever a non-token creature ETB is in our control, we can play green-blue and just make a copy of it that's copy of that creature. Yeah, it's a little more expensive on the mana scale, but they stick around. They're still going to get us the energy. They're going to have multiple effects. And there's some great creatures in the deck that we love to have multiple copies of. So again, the game plan is get a few creatures out that gain energy when they come into the battlefield. And either copy or blink them to continually get more energy. And use the energy through different avenues to push us forward in the game. Well, as far as energy and ETB goes, we get a couple big boys. Aether Squall Ancient, Aether Tide Whale, Aether Wind Basker we get here versus that Jeskai deck. Um, Ancient says at the beginning of our upkeep we get three energy. I have to tie whales says when it comes in we get six. Either way, Basker says when it comes in we get energy for each crazy control, which is a great ability. Basker is a great uh, energy sink if we need to because it's a bottom ability. It says you could pay an energy to give it pulse 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 on a turn and it has trample, meaning we could load a ton of energy into it and just run somebody over. Aetherwide can actually um, continually. Um, bounce itself back if we have the mana and want to replay it to get more and more energy. Um, and Aether Squall Ancient can just return everything, all creatures back to their owner's hand if need be, so it's a pretty big threat as well. Bristling Hydra comes in and gets us three energy, and we can pay three energy to put a counter on it and protect it. Electro Static Pummeler, the classic car the classic creature to go on alongside Bristling Hydra in that classic team or energy deck, giving us three when it comes in, and we can pay three to double its power. Pima Aether Seer, when it comes in, we get an amount of energy equal to the greatest power among creatures we control. We could pay three to give the target creature has to block this turn of able. But again, here's another great ETB that the bigger the creature we have out, more and more energy every time we repeat that. Uh, Robo Brain Warmind, when it ETBs, you get energy equal to the number of artifact creatures you control. And we have some creatures that can make artifact tokens with, with, um, with energy. So uh, very useful there. Rogue Refiner, whenever it comes in, we draw a card and get two energy. So again, we could draw when we blink this. Sage of Salia's uh, Claim just gets us three energy when it comes in for two mana. The Mother Load gets us a amount of energy equal to the number of non-basic lands the player you choose controls. And when it attacks, you can blow something up and stop creatures without flying uh, from blocking, potentially leading us to a big attack. We'll take Brawler, just two mana for two energy, and for World of Virtuoso, three mana for three energy, and we could pay three energy to get Thopters, a way to kind of turn a large amount of energy into creatures to potentially help end the game that way, uh, it, you know, if needed. And we have a couple of those creatures that can turn energy into uh, tokens for us to use to push the game forward. But we're talking about the ATB. How are we going to take advantage of Riku and other cards to copy or blink? Well, Harmonic Prodigy says if the ability of a Shaman or Wizard triggers, that ability triggers an additional time. This means that we can play blue-green on Riku twice to get two copies if need be. Phyrexian Metamorph comes in as a copy of any artifact or creature. Progenitor Mimic comes in as a copy of any creature, except it has a beginning of upkeep if this creature isn't a token. Create a token that's a copy of it, uh, meaning we can get more and more copies of something every um, upkeep. Thoughts of Deep Dwelling just blinks a creature at the end of each end step, allowing them to come back in and get more energy. Doppelganger allows us to pick X target permanents and make copies of them. 
This is useful not just for creatures that have ETB energy abilities, but maybe other things uh, as far as artifacts that we're not going to talk about, at least here in the presentation, to um, get you energy or use energy for things. Mythos of Aluna, a four mana sorcery that says create a token that's a copy of target permanent. If red green was spent to cast this spell, instead create a token that's a copy of that permanent, except the token has when this permanent ETBs, if it's a creature, it fights up to one target creature you don't control. Uh, what I like about Mythos is it's a copy, but it can copy any permanent, not just a creature, which can be important sometimes depending on what you're copying, but it just gives you a lot of options and for a little bit of removal of that fight when the thing comes in. C double will let us copy target spell if we want to, or cop create a token that's copy of target creature, anything on the battlefield, either copy one of our things, or hey, one of our opponent's things if need be. Panharmonicon, double up those ETBs. Same thing with Virtue of Knowledge. As you can see, we're trying to just support all of these different creatures and different things that make energy on ETB or other things entering, and really trying to game them to get more and more energy and use that energy um, to finish out the game. I know that's a very bird's eye kind of airplane view of what the deck's trying to do, but at the end of the day, we're playing a resource game. We're trying to accumulate energy and use it through certain effects to push our board state towards the win. And there's no necessarily one, two, three card combo that's going to win us the game. It's keeping netting this energy, storing it, and then using it to um, get what we need to push the game. Forward. But I've said it before on the show, and I'll say it again, no decks are ever complete. This is my version 1.0 of the deck, and I think there's a lot of things that can be improved. And there'd be a lot of things that I would learn by playing the actual deck. But three cards I really like for the deck that I cut, they'd be on my list to come back in. The first is Sahili, the Sun's Brilliance. This is a two-mana created token that's a copy of another artifact or creature you control until end of turn. Seems really helpful, not just because there's a lot of creatures we like that have ETB triggers, but it does say artifacts, and there are some nice artifacts in this deck that can double the amount of energy you get or allow you to pay energy into them to make uh, different things or to use them for different abilities i like it but as far as copying goes or blinking goes you know there are other options it just comes down to which do you want to kind of pitch uh, your horse to and which do you want to run with double major makes a ton of sense especially when it can copy something that's legendary and make it non-legendary yes it's a creature spell there are a few legendary creatures in the deck, not a ton. Of course, Riku would always be an option as well. But I think um, this is just useful for copying the right creature at the right time, getting two of them and allowing us to profit from that. And then Mirror March, or a non token creature in his battlefield, flip a coin until you lose the flip. For each flip you win, create a copy of it. Again, just a way to potentially go off and make so much energy in the process as we go. But let's get into our play tests here. Game one, keeping a three lander with Solar Transformer, which is a mana rock uh, that can comes in and gives us energy, and we can pay mana to get it, or an energy to get a mana of any color. Doppelgang, Assaultron Dominator, two energy when it comes in, and then whenever an artifact creature we control is attacked, we can pay an energy and give it a little buff. And then Lightning Runner, an actual way to potentially end the game in the deck, says whenever it attacks, you get two energy, then you can pay eight energy. If you do untap all creatures you control, and after this, there's an additional combat. So Lightning Runner is a way to potentially sink all of our energy into it for multiple combats. But turn one, we draw a Harmonic Pro Prodigy, which isn't bad. We'll get that Ridge Line in turn one tapped. I mean, both of our other lands are untapped, so we should be able to get the Transformer down on turn two, or Prodigy, whatever we decide to do. Here I think we get the Exotic Orchard down, and we'll get the Transformer, and the Transformer comes in tapped, which is A-OK, -okay, but it is going to give us three energy as well, so a good uh, little reserve to start, and we can pay an energy to get a man of any color, or just tap it for a colorless, so lots of good uh, options there. Turn three, we'll get this Island down. We're still one mana off of Riku, so I don't want to go too deep. But I kind of like the idea of, let's see, maybe Harmonic Prodigy to set up for it. And then maybe the Domatron. I guess that would require one of our opponents having a red for Exotic Orchard. If they don't, we would just pay an energy. But let's say with the purpose of this, they do. That would get us up to five energy. And we'd be okay for the moment. We're just hoping again we can get into another land for Riku. And, of course, we don't, but that's okay. Um, we could, see, we could metamorph the Transformer, which would guarantee that we get um, 
or Riku next turn, which is what I think I'd want to do. So that's going to get us three more energy. And that's coming as a copy of the Transformers. So now we're guaranteed to get Riku out next turn, and we can just continue to set up. Turn five, of course we see the land, but we'll pay two energy for into each of the Transformers. I believe this was at six. Let's go ahead and get Riku down. So now when we start bringing things in, we can pay mana to we can pay mana to copy them, and Harmonic Prodigy will actually double up Riku. So if we cast a sorcery or we have a non-token uh, creature come in, we can actually pay twice, which is pretty cool. So I like it. We got a good little setup. Domatron co Dominator could attack here if we wanted to. You have to plus one plus one first strike or trample maybe. Um, but otherwise, I think we just kind of sit tight and wait to see what we can grab next. Quasi Duplicate feels great. Um, confiscation coup, uh, can coup can steal our opponent's things. Robo Brain is only getting us what? Really, only two energy at the moment. Lightning Runner could come in and uh, get us some energy right now. The cool part about Lightning Runner, well, we only have six mana, so we can't copy Lightning Runner yet, or not effectively, right? If we do Robo Brain, we can copy it once, right? I think let's do that. We'll play the Robo Brain for these four. We'll do oh, what one, two, three, four, and we'll just need to use one energy for Riku's ability to make a copy of Robo Brain, right? So the first Robo Brain comes in seeing two artifact counters or two artifact creatures. So um, that, and then the third, or the next Robo Brain comes in and sees two, uh, three artifact creatures total, so that's 10. Robo Brain is, says that its power is equal to the number of cards on our hand, which is four. Whenever it attacks, we can pay three energy. If we do, we draw cards up. Not a bad little start here. Dumbtron could start giving them counters with its ability if we want to, but otherwise, I like this. We got a good amount of energy. We've got some good things here waiting to go. All we kind of need, I think, is just another turn to get some resources down. We could Rogue Refiner. We have, what, six mana at the moment? We could Rogue Refiner to double draw, right, and get a bunch more energy. That could be kind of a fun option, right? It'd be one of those things where we would play Rogue Refiner and then pay the two mana to get a copy, and that would actually draw us two and gain us. We would lose an energy but gain four back. I think that makes the most sense make a copy of it we would have to pay an energy to um make a copy though but then we would get four energy and draw two still no fifth land jeez um but hey aetherwind basker is one of the cards that could potentially run us towards the end of the game uh, with its ability right dumping energy into it to make it a big attacker i like bristling hydra a lot being a creature that can protect itself and it's a big body and again, now once we start um, having any way to blink things, you know, now we have great targets to blink, uh, and uh, we have some expendable bodies if um, if need be. We'll go with one more turn, and we draw an Aether Revolt. It says as long as a permanent control left the battlefield this turn, if a sorcery control would deal non-combat damage to an opponent or permanent opponent controls deals that much plus two. And whenever you get one or more energy, it deals that much damage to a target. So here's a great way to turn energy into damage, which doesn't seem too, too bad. There's a couple ways we could handle this turn. We could try to Doppelgang. I've got six mana. So unfortunately, the Doppelgang would only be for, what, one? Which I guess isn't that good. We'd probably want to wait on that. We could Lightning Runner to get some energy and take a big attack here. We could quasi-duplicate something like uh, Rogue Refiner. To draw a card and get some more energy and try to see if we can draw into another land and get that popping. We'd only have three mana if we quasi duplicate, so we can't, um, we wouldn't be able to uh, do that. But what we could do is use Rico's first ability to get two copies of this, you know, get two Rogue Refiners. Again, four more energy, two more cards. And just, I, I, my thought here is just try to get try to get into, um, we would what, lose one because of the 
uh, path to paying one of the mana into this the solar transformers but again my goal here is just try to get into a land and there we go we get into at least one land so now next turn we're set up for this basker my thought would maybe be basker and then lightning runner and set up this lightning runner win we'll, we'll stop here for the purposes of this play test but my thought would be next turn play the command tower we now have eight mana get the basker down this turn it's going to come in and get us four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, what, 10, 10 energy. Um, and set up next turn where we could hit, get the runner down and just start slamming through with the Basker into people. That would be my thought, and I think it would probably lead to a fun um, outcome there for us. But playtest two, we're keeping a four lander with a nature's lore of twinning staff and a primal prayer. So a very different hand from last game. When the DTPs, we get two energy. We can cast a creature spell to mana value three or less by paying energy one energy instead of their mana costs. But if we do it that way, it, we can do it as though it has flash. So kind of interesting ability. Get the islet down uh, turn one. Main reason why is this now comes in untapped. And I like the idea of getting that nature's lore um, played. I mean, at the end of the day, we want to ramp up to Riku anyway. And... The, you know, that, that uh, land ain't going to hurt us. We'll get the Ketria Triumph just to have all of our colors. Uh, turn three here. We should be able to Replicating Ring and Harmonic Prodigy. So we've set the Prodigy up to, right, double up on Riku. I like it. Rubber Brain feels like it's going to be a good one to play uh, once we get everything all set up. Turn four here, we've got six mana. So I'd say we just Riku. And then a two with Ether, get a basic land, um, put it into your hand and then get two energy. We could do it right now. We do have the one mana left. Sorry, this uh, this would get a counter. My only thing there is, uh, I mean, if we waited a turn, we could play Twinning Staff copy it and get a second copy because of the twinning staff which could be fun and load our hand up with a bunch of lands make sure we never run out of mana for the rest of the game that kind of feels like it's not a bad choice so let's do that oh no sorry uh one more turn we'll go another turn here so here i'm thinking twinning staff for three so we've got one two three mana left pay a mana for a tune to ether Riku goes off. We'll pay the red green to um, to copy it. So what we do is go blue into flooded grove for double green, and then replicate for blue green, and then replicating ring for red. So a two of either copy it. Twinning staff will copy it again. So two copies of it. So we're gonna get two basic lands. Sorry, three basic lands total and six energy. So this should ideally, right in the grand scheme of things, fund anything we need to do, right, for the rest of the game. We shouldn't have to worry about mana now at this point. Now getting three uh, of those into our hand. We'll go uh, another turn here. So get a land down, one, two, three, four, five, six. Seven mana. We've got the um, Strionic Resonator, which could copy Riku's trigger. The Robo Brain at this point, we could do what? If you would copy a spell one more time, so we don't copyright, we just copy when it comes in. It's going to go off twice, right? So four mana. We need one more mana to copy it twice, right? Ah, bummer. We could still copy it once. It would come in and get us one energy and then two energy. I think, in all reality, we could wait, right? I mean, it's not like we necessarily need it this turn. And if doing it next turn would get us, I guess, more energy and then have more copies of the Warmind down and ready to go. We could do the prayers. We could do... I kind of like the idea of Aether Revolt here. So when you get one or more energy, it deals that much damage to any target. And with three mana left, I mean... It's only instant or sorcery there, so it's not like we can copy it. Uh, we could take a run at somebody if there's a there, but I doubt on turn six our 2 is going to do us any good. We'll go another turn here. Play a land for turn, and again, now we have enough mana to 
Robo Brain and double pay for it for Riku. So the first one's gonna come in, we'll get the two Riku triggers and the War Mine. We're gonna pay with Riku twice to make two copies of it. So um the way this will work is the third one we'll see three creatures, right? Three artifact creatures netting us uh, three energy dealing three damage to any target the second one coming in is just gonna see two and you know dealing damage to her two and then the first one's just gonna see uh, uh, well it'll see th uh, what the first one coming in it where we're, we're, we're stacking the triggers to do I just probably should just be one now the damage one. This is up to four. So now we have three attackers. All of them are four fives right now. A great basis for maybe some attacking if need be. Replicating rings work its way up. We got a ton of energy to work with. And I kind of like this position right here. We'll go one more turn here. And for turn, Aether Refinery says whenever we get one more energy, we get twice that much instead. And we can pay any amount of energy to get an XX uh, creature token. Which, believe me, isn't bad either. If I go six into that, I wouldn't have mana to like copy Growth Spiral a couple times. See, I kind of like the idea of Growth Spiral copying it twice with Harmonic Prodigy and then getting the third copy with Twinning Stab. So that'd be one, two, three, four, five, six mana, right? We would draw three and put a land down. Four, sorry, we would do this four times. So draw a card, no land to put down. Draw a card, no land to put down. Draw a card land to put down, draw a card, land to put down. And again, the goal there is just to, you know, get a bunch of cards, extra cards in our hand. So that was two, three, four, five, six. We got one, two, three, four, five mana left. A little bit outside of the, um, uh, the twinning staff, but we do have enough for Thassa. Thassa is going to come in as a creature, but obviously we don't have enough mana to duplicate it nor do we want to but at the beginning of our end step we just bounce the robo mind it comes back in netting us uh three more energy uh three damage to any target and i mean that's my continual bounce that i'm going to do to just continue to get more energy right um and again just try to draw more cards right uh, with, with any effects we can again we're probably looking for another good attacker or a way to get a bunch more cards in our hand to make these bigger, but I think we're kind of in that mid-game where we're just looking for one or two more pieces. But let me know, what do you think of Riku down in the comments section below? I think it's an interesting idea for the deck, right? The teamer idea, I think, is there. Again, probably needs a little bit of polishing. That's the point of the show is we're just taking our first shot at it, but I'd love to know what you would do to polish it up, make it a little bit better. And if you have a Riku energy deck, I'd love to hear what you think down in the comments section below. Or... If you have any ideas, throw them down in the comments section below. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will catch you guys next time.